institution of AU, how it could differ from other places you've been. And I certainly found that. I taught elsewhere for about 12 or 13 years before I came here. And uh, this was a very different kind of place from my previous institution. Uh, and then, uh, in, very important for me, is to ensure through service that faculty have a voice in shared governance. Uh, here at AU, we operate on a shared governance model, uh, so uh, we collaborate with the administration and students, too, in order to uh, make this place um, uh, uh, grow and uh, a place where we want to be and uh, can see ourselves continuing to stay. And then uh, here's the thing that's probably on your mind, uh, the idea that um, service allows you to fulfill a contractual obligation. So you have to do it. And there are uh, documents that uh, describe this, including the faculty manual, and also your unit guidelines or departmental guidelines for uh, promotion, retention, tenure, et cetera. Uh, so it's important that you are aware of those guidelines, the localized ones in your uh, programs or departments, but also uh, the faculty manual, which has uh, a, a great deal to say about uh, our positions and expectations for them. The faculty manual is a board of um, trustees document. They approve it. And uh, the faculty senate, which I can talk about again in a minute, uh, the faculty senate takes proposals uh, to the board and and uh, we talk about um, how we might uh, change the manual to make things work better at AU. Um, this is a periodic sort of annual undertaking. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, we also discussed um, in our uh, pre um, meeting, uh, the idea of different kinds or levels of service. So on campus, there are opportunities, uh, usually in programs and departments, um, in your school or college, and then also in the university as a whole. And off campus, uh, too, and um, our professional lives, uh, we might be involved in an association or something like that, um, community and professional um, contributions that are related to your fields are also um, important and valued. Uh, so just to few more uh, comments on the top part uh, to say that uh, as um, you get to know the institution and uh, becoming more involved in uh, its um, ac activities and management, uh, that you might think about moving sort of first in terms of service to uh, your localized community and your program or department, uh, branching out after a couple of years into your college or school, and then eventually working your way out into university um, committees. And you might find that it doesn't work in the way, the sort of way I described. You might be jumping around depending on opportunities that come your way. Uh, but um, really, the longer you're here, the more responsibility in service um, is um, uh, expected, depending again on your uh, guidelines and your programs and departments. Uh, but also, uh, you know, as you as you grow as a uh, professional, uh, you also have a lot to contribute and you can give back in uh, positions of leadership as you uh, learn the institution and become familiar with, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, become familiar with the way AU works. Okay, so um, I wanted to share um, some stories of my own service experience, and uh, we I hope that this will not necessarily guide you because your experiences will be different, but just give you a sense of uh, some of the things, the opportunities that have come our way and how we have thought about them over the years. Um, so uh, if... Um, if I had to give you one piece of advice about service, I would say to strategize it. I found over the years, uh, first coming into my previous institution, I didn't really have a service plan. I didn't really know what it was about. Uh, I was invited to be on a social committee and I thought, well, I'm not very social. <laughs> Um, but I guess I'll do it and see how it goes. Um, so I did. And it turned out that that was the incredible foundation for everything else I did at that institution, because I met so many different people around campus. And those relationships then grew into opportunities. 
So I would say to think about how you can strategize from the beginning about how you can uh, use your best uh, talents and skills and pursue your own interests. I heard you say this earlier in the previous session. Pursue your own interests, which are really motivating. And uh, I think you'll find as you are motivated by your choices uh, that you become sought for service opportunities and that those opportunities grow in terms of their uh, visibility and uh, outreach, and um, then you'll eventually find yourself chair of the faculty senate, which is <laughs> what happened to me. Um, but there was a lot between uh, my first experience and that. And I would say, because I had done this already, I'd been through that sort of initial introduction to service before I came to AU. When I got here, I thought, okay, so I want to be more involved. And how can I go about doing it? Again, thinking about what interested me at that time. Um, in my previous position, I was um, on the gender studies committee uh, that relates to my research. And I uh, continue to uh, think that way here as well, uh, but also uh, in terms of faculty voice, wanting to make sure that we were part of faculty uh, governance and that uh, we were uh, participating vigorously in uh, that aspect of university life. Uh, I find that to be very important uh, in terms of um, making sure that our views are heard and that we uh, have a say um, in, in things that happen at this institution. Uh, so the other thing is I started to think about how service could push me into new territories. How could I grow from my choices? So in this, I ended up um, thinking through different ways in which I might um, participate in leadership on campus. So this went uh, sort of everywhere from my program where I was a program director. Uh, now I'm a department chair. I was a director of graduate studies in art history, which is my field. And um, all of this helped me, together with my time on the faculty senate, um, helped me to um, uh, grow as a professional into new areas that I hadn't thought I'd ever be involved in. So that's been really fulfilling for me to think about uh, where I started and sort of how I made my way through. And sometimes these opportunities, even though I keep saying strategize, these opportunities might come to you unexpectedly. And um, you, know, you, you might have to start making choices um, um, in order to do a good job with something, you don't want to overextend, right? So, you know, uh, make, think about making choices. What can you do? How would you balance things if you can't do something now, but you're interested? Make sure that's clear, right? I can't do it now, but I'd love to be uh, approached again if you need someone. So um, all of this has um, uh, added up right now for me in my role as a chair. I, I feel like I'm a much better chair uh, because of all of the experiences that I've had on campus. And still today, I always uh, tune in to the faculty senate meetings uh, because I uh, feel that uh, listening to what other faculty say in this wider context makes me a better department chair. I can strategize better for my department. So it, it's, it's all about thinking through the issues that are really important to you and how the different pockets of opportunity on campus uh, might be motivating for you and then lead you um, into some areas that um, provide some interesting variety and uh, opportunities for growth. Thank you so much, Andrea. So um, my story, um, I, I thought I would also share my story with you a little bit and how I came to be in administration, which was actually a service journey. Um, so I think I mentioned to you before in the last session, this is my 10th year at AU. I came in as term faculty and um, you know, I was put on the DEI committee in SOC, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee at SOC. I didn't actually choose it, I was just put on it. Um, but I found the work to be really interesting and I was very passionate about it. Over time, I became the chair of that committee. Then I was tapped to become the inclusion officer. Um, and then I ended up joining a, a, a ton of university-wide committees on DEI um, and inclusive excellence here. Some of them I was asked to, some of them I volunteered for, but they really spread across everything from say, um, looking at curriculum and pedagogy to looking at how how we hire, how we uh, mentor, how we promote, 
And so before you know it, you know, not only was I doing something I was really passionate about, but I was also doing something that was creating a whole story around my service portfolio, right? So it's not that everything I did was in that space, but I found that it became something that I was able to created a narrative out of, for lack of a better word. Um, and then when this position became open in the provost's office for, this is a brand new position that I hold. It's um, the position partially existed before, but the inclusive excellence piece of this position is an add-on to the associate dean of faculty. Um, and I found myself sort of perfectly positioned to go for it, right? Because of this service history that I had had before. Um, and the inclusive excellence was the kind of the key um, for me. So, um, so that's that's just my story. It doesn't necessarily have to be your story, um, but to, that's only to say that there are areas of specialization um, that you can do within the service. And sometimes when you're thinking about that, and if you are thinking about it from a strategic perspective, you might think about like what is most important to the university, you know, in the up, in, what is like kind of the featured pieces of the AU strategy, which you can find anywhere. So, for example, experiential education is a big aspect of something that AU is focusing on in the future. Um, um, or looking at how to do hybrid classes um, or classes that offer multiple modalities. So that might be an area that you think about, you know, broadening into. Um, and I will say that service is, and I just want to sort of double down on this before I turn it to you for questions, but you know, services, again, it's not the most important component of your reappointment um, paperwork. You know, it's, you know, obviously teaching and then, you know, research, currency in the field, scholarship, but service is an important one. In the same way that we talk about student participation being important in terms of their overall grade, service is a really important piece of what you'll be doing here at the university. And so, you know, choosing those opportunities, I think, is an important one. But keep your eyes open. They come from everywhere, you know, and sometimes you just want to, like, volunteer for the stuff that you're interested in and um, and go from there. So let me ask you all if you have any questions for us. Are we are we out of time? No? Okay. Okay, good. Yeah, and I just want to say too that that you know as you guys process whether you have questions, um, that you will sometimes get you know, uh, this might come up like in a division meeting or a departmental meeting, you know, where the chair says, I really need somebody to help with this. And everybody's like sitting on their hands. Um, you know, that that's a great opportunity to sort of step forward and say, I can help. Maybe I don't know everything, but I'm willing to be part of a team that looks at this. It's like a foray like that, or a position becomes open on a committee, right, within the Senate or within the school. Um, and you volunteer yourself for that. Um, that's another way that this comes about. Um, and, uh, and then there's the elected positions, like the ones in faculty senate. Yeah. Yes. Is uh, our service opportunities reserved for, for full-time faculty? Because I'm adjunct. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. I mean, I think you can do service as an adjunct, but I think that, um, you know, it's not necessarily part of your evaluation. Um, so we would welcome volunteering and service from anybody. Yeah. Any other questions? I suspect there isn't one answer to this question. Um, for a, a new faculty member in a department, um, Presumably the source of the most soon obligations will be from the chair of that department. Uh, I'll put this carefully. How much choice uh, would a new faculty member have um, in either accepting or rejecting um, obligations that are, are asked of them, especially, especially in the, when they just arrive at the university as a new faculty member? That's a great question, and I'll, I'll have you answer as well. But I think that there is a range of choice there, right? You do want to be conscious that you're not saying no to everything, right? But if you feel like it's more than you can do, especially if it's your first semester teaching, and if you're on tenure line, um, you know, you want to be conscious of not over committing to service. So, um, and I think usually your chair and your mentor will know that, that, and they'll advise you against it. Like, don't take this on. You can't do this right now, you know, because you have these other obligations. But I, I would say that, um, you know, don't say no to everything, but choose the things you want to do. 
Uh, yes, I totally agree with that. And as a department chair uh, for incoming faculty, I tried to caution them to not overdo it right away, um, but to work into it with the advice of the chair or a mentor. Um, the, the different schools are structured differently, so it would depend. Uh, but um, it, it's important to be able to sustain what you have volunteered to do. Uh, some things uh, are assignments, um, and perhaps a good place to start is to ask if there will be one of those <laughs> for you, um, and then see if there, if not, if there's another opportunity that can be suggested. Uh, one thing we've done in, um, in the art history area uh, that I directed for a while is to think about the skills of the people uh, in the, the different positions we have. For example, we have someone who oversees sees all of our social media. Um, and that would not be me because I made a decision a long time ago not to be on social media. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so we are careful about who goes into which positions to make sure they have the skills and the interest in those positions uh, rather than necessarily assigning. So I would have a talk with your department chair about that and uh, see where that takes you. Yeah, and I will say that as you begin to do service um, across the university, you are able to bring that expertise back into your department and your school, which is actually really valuable because you become like this expert voice on that. Like, well, you've been in that room or you know what's happening with this. So can you help um, guide us in terms of our, um, you know, our practices on this? Uh, this um, reminds me to come back for just a second to the idea of elections uh, versus um, assignments or volunteers tiering for a position. And for the faculty senate, the representation is elected. And that's important because we want elected representatives uh, for the faculty uh, in um, terms of uh, balance among the different schools, et cetera. So uh, an interest in representation across the board. Uh, so you'll see as you make your way through uh, that there will be uh, announcements coming out uh, to run for things and announcements coming out to vote for things. Things. So I would really encourage you to pay attention to those. And one thing that we have found is that uh, sometimes someone runs for a position but doesn't get elected, uh, gets but gets their name out there through that process, and then ultimately becomes successful later. So if you do not get elected, don't take that as a bad sign. Uh, but you know sometimes people need a, 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 a opportunity to get to know your name, to know who you are, um, to see your interest in running um, through doing it a couple of times uh, versus uh, immediate success. Okay, So uh, just a cautionary note there uh, to not give up uh, if you run once or twice um, and are not elected. Any other questions? Okay, one last point I did wanna make on the off-campus opportunities. When you're doing off-campus opportunities, do think about them broadly, right? So often we think, oh, well, I volunteered at um, a soup kitchen, for example. I'm not really gonna count that towards my service. But it's in terms of like the way that we understand DEI contributions, inclusive excellence contributions, that could be something that qualifies as service. So do think about the ways that you're supporting underrepresented communities throughout the area. Like we really think about strong community engagement, especially where you are leveraging your your. Um, scholarly background in one way or another um, as being something that's service. And to give you an example of that, like I've done, I've done consulting work for a few of a few DC nonprofits, including um, the Capital Area Food Bank and um, you know, a, a couple of others, the Bridge Project, the Anacostia River Bridge Project, which actually were paid, but the work really leveraged my professional background as a public relations expert. That's that was my life before I came here as, as a PR practitioner. Um, and so I was able to provide those skills, but to an audience that otherwise is not as engaged on these, you know, doesn't have the opportunities on these things. Um, so that becomes both career currency in my portfolio as well as service. Um, so I, I did want to also mention that. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And you're not done with me. I'm back tomorrow talking about term faculty. So I'll see you tomorrow.
we get a little extra five minute break until the next session. Sometimes if you can hear somebody say, yeah. oh, then then on the other side, because the so uh, it's like when your name makes it the keychain recognition. Uh, I'll never be there, but I'm fine. Yeah, one point. It's more. Goes towards our service. Yeah.